Okay. And we're back. Um, so I know what I'm going to do, I think. All right, at least I have a good starting point for this. Um, I'm going to move fairly quickly through this. I've been wasting a lot of time. Um, and I'm not going to explain a huge amount of stuff until after I finish it, but um, uh, I'll talk through some of it. Uh, so first thing we want to do is make some components or whatever you want to call them. Um, we can rename this later. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah, utils. Um, and we want to do an extractor. Um, so uh, this is going to be for JavaScript, um, but we want to maintain language agnostic approach. So basically, this is going to take our, or sorry, um, basically, this is going to take our comments and it is going to, out of our source code, it's going to return them not in the Acorn format, but in some sort of universally agreed on format that I'm going to use. Um, and for right now, I'm not going to like try to code that or error check it or anything um, because there's only one parser. So like I can go back and do that. Like don't don't pre optimize and also don't pre extract things, abstract things. So uh, now we get to this idea of like only comments that start with a double star should be parsed. Um, that's not actually true. Um, <laughs> like only block comments should be parsed. And this is the type of filtering that we want to do later. Um, so I'm actually going to pull this out. And we're still going to have this idea for right now because I'm not going to deal with the, uh, well, we're going to get to it. But um we're we're going to get to the idea of, of different comment block types. That is actually what I'm what I'm working towards. But for right now we're just going to leave that there. Um and we're going to focus on putting these into a shared comment type that everyone can consume. Um remember that I have the whole node modules nested thing. I talked about that in an earlier video if you're curious. Um but um Basically, my source is embedded in a secondary no modules folder, and the big advantage of that is that I can do this. No relative paths. It just magically works. All right, cool. Um, so var comments equals extractor source. Cool. That's extracted out. Um, yeah. So we have filtered out, we are only returning block comments. That's quite on purpose, and that's fine to leave in the instructor. But we want to return comments.map. We want to return these in a different format. We do want to return a location in the source code. And I believe, let me actually pull up the documentation for Acorn. It's foolish for me not to have up. I believe that Acorn gives me position in the source, which is quite nice. And 
Come on, where is the documentation for this? And yes, okay. So we have ranges. If the range is on, gives the start and end. Okay, but we really only care about the end. So end is going to be location, and that will be comment dot end. Um, and what that means is that like this line right here will be the line of the comment. Um, and that'll allow us to have some just kind of nice things. Like it would be kind of nice to be able to to refer back to where this was, stuff was found. Um, so we do care about that. We care about text, which is just going to be comment dot value. Actually, what's the format that is this a is this a generally agreed on format? What's a Sprema? Should I not be converting this at all? Should I just be using a Sprema's ECMAScript parsing infrastructure for multi-purpose analysis? This looks like more than I actually care about. Type keyword value const. Okay, yeah, this is more than I care about. Um, and I might want to deviate it from at some point, but but cool, we have a Sprema. Um, I'm not going to be using it, but cool. What else do I want other than location and text inside a comment? This needs to be passed. Nothing else. All right, so cool. This needs to be rewritten. Let's put this in as a to do. Oh, it already is. That's going to be the block types. Um, now we have this whole graph stuff down here that I'm going to be ripping out some of this code and refactoring it, moving it around. Um, let's get rid of this stuff. Um. So the graph needs to be able to have a reference to all of this stuff, which means the next thing that we want is to start sticking things on top of, like this comments.filter thing should probably be part of the node generation. That now that I have an array of comments, I have something that makes a node gives it an index slash lists. Um, but instead, probably I would want this to be let's just make sure tests still pass. Um, oh, blue, -rga blah, -rga blue, -rga. I did a thing. What should I have done? Speaking of me, uh, not doing things correctly. Comment dot text. All right, cool. So that's a good good for me to catch early. Um, so I should probably move this into a separate class or something that that looks like a separate class. Um, yeah, all right, but I can, I can do that next. So if I construct a new block, it needs to know the type. That's based off of the first couple of characters of the comment up until the space or a new line. And then, I mean, attachment of the block, I can modify the, the block after the fact. So like if I'm doing an at to do, or forget about the at to do, if I'm, if I'm doing a, a source block, 
All I really need to know is, is it a new block or is it the previous block? So really I want like some type of graph object. So I, I already have a var graph right here. So let's say that instead of, of building a node, we have a function graph. And we're passing in a source to the graph. Uh, no, we're not passing a source to the graph. We just have a graph. Um, prototype dot And graph is just going to return back a new node. So this is going to return a node. except then node won't have the prototype set correctly. Um, I'm just trying to think about where I want these utilities to be, if maybe it makes sense to separate them out entirely. That actually seems a lot cleaner, that really you just want, really, I just want to go into utils and I want to have graph as a ut set of utils. Um, just module dot we can just module dot exports all of this that seems cleaner that seems a lot cleaner than than what I was planning on doing originally with with splitting things on to with with making the nodes be like actual objects with functions on them instead you just have a bunch of graph utilities and we can do something like add um, get block or something like that And for all of these, basically, you could pass in the comment. Because the comment is now, like, standardized, I no longer care about the other stuff. Um, maybe you do pass it in the source. Maybe this is something that you have to kind of construct, where you're, like, function graph source. Because it needs to be able to have a reference to the source itself to pull stuff out of it. It just feels really clunky and bad, right? Like, it feels really clunky and bad. Like, why, at that point, why not? At that point, like, why are they separate things? And the short answer is I'm not sure. Like what what exactly am I actually trying to avoid by splitting these up? I'm trying to make things cleaner. I'm trying to avoid having this public manipulation a API where people are like moving things around and trying to reattach them because that suddenly becomes a lot more complicated. I would rather give people a static data structure at the end. Um, but people are very frequently going to be calling this repetitively on like multiple instances of the same graph. So things are going to be linked across because things are going to be linked across files. Um, so at that point, does it actually make sense to constrain them and say like, well, no, you can't insert your own node. You can't like randomly build your own node. You can't do any of that stuff. Um, Because that would also just way open up the, the gateway for, for extensions and stuff. That if I wanted to build like a separate helper utility or something with this that was in a different repo, all you'd need to do is pass in the graph 
and it could require like it could extend off of some of this stuff and and do some interesting extra things um I'm going to stay the course for right now. This is a weird API, and it probably should be different. But I'm going to stay the course for right now because I can always go back and change it later. I only care about this working right now. Let's just double check how regex works really quickly. I mean, the first character might not even be null. I mean, it might not even be one of these. It could just be null. If you pass in a null comment, shouldn't it, like, shouldn't that be the first thing I do is just filter out any null? No, I can't, can I? Because those get, um, because, um, Comment blocks get, uh, or or not comment, but a uh, a code code blocks get appended to the previous block, and they will often be null. So I don't want to filter out no null blocks. But I do want to basically, I want to have a way of returning like, okay, this isn't a code block. I'm not going to do anything with it. So what what are the first things that this might return? This might return a new block. This might return null if it's not an actual block. If it's not an actual block, maybe it just returns null. It could return the previous block. Crud, this looks so stupid. This doesn't look good at all. I 
my mind is actually just kind of dead right now. Um, I mean, it's it's mid afternoon on a weekend. Um, I'm gonna pause for just a second and go like, I don't know, take a shower, or take a walk, or something. Um, and then I'm gonna come back after having not thought about this for some time, and um, then I expect that I'll be able to just code this a whole lot quicker. Um, so assuming that this recording hasn't already gone on far too long, um, I'll either be back or, or make another video. Um, 